Hey everyone, I just got my hands on two new power stations from DJI, the Power 1000 and Power 500. You probably know DJI as a drone maker, but they've been branching out and every time they do, they tend to come out swinging for the market leader with fresh ideas and new features that really shake things up. Now they're entering the power station market and taking aim at companies like EcoFlow, Jackery, and Blue Eddy. In this video, we're gonna compare these head to head with EcoFlow's latest power stations to see which one's best. Let's get into it. There's two models, both with very competitive pricing. The DJA Power 1000 has a 1024 watt hour battery, 2200 watt AC inverter, and a launch price of only $699. And the smaller Power 500 has a 512 watt hour battery, 1000 watt inverter, and a launch price of $379. Both have a five year warranty backed by DJI's excellent support and share a lot of the same features. A super bright display that can be easily read across the room, a streamlined design with all the input and output ports on the front panel, safe and long lasting LFP battery chemistry rated at 4,000 cycles, oversized AC inverters that are almost twice as powerful as similar power stations, a fast 20 millisecond UPS to switch from grid to battery power when the power goes out, ultra quiet fans that are nearly silent even under heavy loads, fast wall charging in just over an hour, solar charging in less than two hours, and powerful dual USB-C ports that can output over 200 watts. The special sauce of these power stations are the new SDC ports that will act as both input and output. The 500 has one port and the 1000 has a pair. DJI will sell specialized adapters to fast charge the Mavic 3 from 10 to 95% in 32 minutes, the Air 3 in 30 minutes, and the Inspire 3 in just 28 minutes. This is by far the fastest way to recharge your DJI drone, so if you have a long day of filming, it's a great feature because you can fly continuously. But SDC ports are for much more than just charging drones. The car charging adapter plugs into your car's cigarette plug and recharges at 100 watts. The MPPT solar adapter lets you plug in up to three solar panels. The Power 500 can accept up to 300 watts of solar, and the Power 1000 can accept up to 800 watts with a pair of MPPT adapters. It's worth noting that there's two things that DJI didn't include in these power stations. First, there's no smartphone app, which means no remote monitoring or advanced settings. On the upside, I know some people will appreciate the simplicity of this, you can still update the firmware if needed, but it requires installing an app, lots of fiddly steps, and connecting via USB, so it's a pretty clumsy process. They also don't include a 12 volt output port. This may be more controversial because it's a pretty standard feature in most power stations, but I bet only a small number of people actually use this. The nice thing is DJI offers a 12 volt output cable that plugs into the SDC port as an accessory so you can run a mini fridge if you want. So how do these stack up to best in class power stations from companies like EcoFlow. Let's compare these side by side so you can see the differences. The Power 500 has the same 512 watt hour LFP battery as the EcoFlow River 2 Max, so these are good to compare. Retail prices are similar, but DJI's launch price is almost $90 less than the EcoFlow. Both have similar feature sets, but there are differences in the layout. The DJI has a narrower, longer shape with all the ports on the front, while the EcoFlow is a bit wider and has inputs on the back. I much prefer the Power 500's design because all the ports are easily accessible and the display is much brighter and better looking than EcoFlow's. The biggest difference is the Power 500's 1000 watt AC inverter is twice as powerful as the 500 watt inverter in the River 2 Max and other competitive units. In fact, it's even more powerful than the inverter in the much larger River 2 Pro. In my test, the River 2 Max could output its rated 500 watts, but would overload in about 20 seconds at 600 watts. Meanwhile, the DJI could run a 1,100 watt load continuously and a 1,200 watt load for 20 seconds, so there's a massive difference in output power. I ran a 100 watt load for 5 hours to measure its AC efficiency and got 80%, which is just average, but keep in mind that's the price you pay for a much larger inverter. UPS speed is important and EcoFlow is rated to switch over within 30 milliseconds, while the DJI is 20 milliseconds so it's much more likely to keep computers running when the grid goes down. 
Both units have USB-C ports that support power delivery 3.0 so they can output 100 watts of power. They're also bi-directional so you can recharge them with USB. Both have legacy USB-A ports and the EcoFlow does have one more if that's important to you. To test USB-C output, I charge my iPhone 15 Pro at 25 watts, the iPad Pro at 35 watts, and the Anchor 737 and my MacBook Pro at 100 watts. Both perform similarly, but the DJI was able to output much more power because it has two USB-C ports. That's a big advantage for DJI. To test USB-C recharging, I plugged these into my new AceFast wall charger. This thing's a beast because it can output multiple modes across its three USB-C ports, including a dual 100 watt output mode. And it has a full color display to let me know exactly what's going on. Plugging it into the River 2 Max, it charged at 100 watts, but after a few seconds, the fans kicked on and it was pretty loud at 47 decibels. Next, I plugged it into the DJI and it also charged at 100 watts, but it was dead quiet. To push it further, I plugged in a second USB-C cable and charged it at close to 200 watts, and even then the fans were barely audible. The same differences in noise were seen when I tested wall charging. Both charge at around 600 watts by plugging in the included charger cable into the wall. DJI has a handy switch on the front to charge at normal or slow speed, a feature that the EcoFlow lacks. You have to open the app for that. At high speed, the 500 charged to 95% in one hour and 100% in just one hour and 10 minutes, and was super quiet the entire time. The River 2 Max charged at the same speed, but again, the fans were much louder. In general, the River 2 Max's fan noise was 15 decibels higher, which translates to it sounding two and a half times louder than the DJI. Now, it may not seem like a big feature, but if you're sitting near a power station, fan noise can be super annoying. So I'm glad DJI spent so much effort on making these near silent. The 500 does not have a built-in solar input, but the SDC Solar MPPT module handles 300 watts of solar input versus 220 watts on the EcoFlow. DJI sent me one of their 100 watt panels to test. It's a really slick design that is surprisingly compact and very rigid when open due to its built-in kickstands and a high quality ETFE panel. It has an XT60 connector that plugs into one of the three inputs on the MPPT module. In my test, I was able to get 88 watts with full sun, but I saw over 100 watts at one point, so these perform really well. You can slide this into your backpack along with your drone and stay flying all day. Speaking of flying, they sent me the new Mini 4 Pro, and it's an amazing drone that's a big step up from my Mini 2 because it adds 4K recording and really impressive obstacle avoidance. There isn't an SDC adapter for this, so instead I charged the Mini 4 batteries through USB-C, and it's perfect for that. Now the DJI 500 weighs roughly two and a half pounds more than the EcoFlow. My hunch is that's because of the bigger inverter and cooling systems, but I think it's worth it. So how does the DJI Power 500 compare to the EcoFlow River 2 Max? Overall, I prefer its design. It's massive AC inverter, dual 100 watt USB-C ports, larger solar input, and ultra quiet fans over the River 2 Max. But keep in mind, it does lack DC output and built-in solar inputs, if that matters to you. Next up, the bigger DJI Power 1000 is a very close competitor to the EcoFlow Delta II, so let's look at those side by side. Both retail for the same $999 price, but DJI has a launch price of $699. From a design perspective, I much prefer having all the input and output ports on the front of the DJI Power 1000 for quick access. I find it annoying to have to reach around back to access the AC and DC output and charging inputs on the Delta II. The AC inverter on the DJI is rated at a whopping 2,200 watts continuous. The Delta II is rated at only 1,800 watts continuous, so the inverter isn't nearly as powerful. When I tested AC output at 1,800 watts, both units performed well and ran for 20 minutes, while the Delta II was noisier at 52 decibels versus 48 with the DJI. At 2000 watts, the Delta II overloaded after 30 seconds, while the DJI had no problem running that continuously. It also ran its 2200 watt rating for 20 minutes straight, so I started pushing it all the way to 2800 watts before it overloaded, and it ran that for a full 30 seconds. I was even able to pull 2900 watts for a second, so this thing has a ton of headroom. 
Out of curiosity, I tested the much larger EcoFlow Delta II Max with the same 2800 watt load and it shut down after 30 seconds. So the inverter in this tiny one kilowatt hour DJI unit is just as powerful as the Delta II Max. That's incredible. In my AC capacity test, I measured 800 watt hours or 80%, which is average and similar to the EcoFlow. But again, that's the price you pay for a larger inverter. Wall charging was fast and only took 65 minutes, which is actually faster than the spec. It has a switch to toggle between fast and slow charging, which is super convenient. Wall charging at 1200 watts was whisper quiet at 32 decibels with the Power 1000. For comparison, the Delta II is very loud at 52 decibels. A 20 decibel difference means the EcoFlow fans actually sound four times louder. That's a massive difference in noise. Even at a slower 600 watt charging speed, the EcoFlow is still more than twice as loud at 44 decibels compared to 32 decibels with the DJI. The 1000 has a pair of USB-C ports that support power delivery 3.1 up to 140 watts of output per port, while the Delta II only supports power delivery 3 and 100 watts of power. Neither support recharging via USB-C. The EcoFlow has two extra USB-A ports, if that matters to you. Solar charger on the DJI can support 800 watts if you connect a pair of solar modules to each SDC port, while the EcoFlow supports 500 watts max with its built-in MPPT port, so there's pros and cons to both. The optional carrying bag for the 1000 is great. It has lots of storage for cables and zippered openings to fully access the display and ports. It makes this feel so much more rugged and convenient to carry, I just leave it on the whole time. Overall, I prefer the DJI Power 1000 for its design, carrying bag, powerful AC and USB-C output, powerful solar inputs, nearly silent fans, and modularity with the SDC ports. But the EcoFlow has the benefit of built-in solar charging, regulated DC output ports, and smartphone app support, one advantage of the Delta II is you can plug in an expansion battery to scale the storage up to two or even three kilowatt hours. So if that's important to you, the EcoFlow has the edge. For its first set of power stations, the DJI has really hit these out of the park. They're focused on content creators and have really delivered on the things that matter most to them. Combined with the modularity of SDC accessories to fast charge DJI drones and add solar and car charging, I think these are really compelling. So what do you think of these new DJI power stations? Are they good enough to take the top spot? Let me know down in the comments. All right, everyone, till next time.